What a mile! My gosh, the undersea tunnel is leaking. This is too hot. Too much cooler, ma. The tunnel is in the port city of Dalian in northeastern China. It was officially opened in early May 2023 and is said to last for 100 years. Now there is serious leakage in addition to a large amount of water continuing to pour from the top of the tunnel. Water also accumulated on the tunnel ground, causing fear for motorists driving through. According to Chinese media, the Dalian Bay undersea tunnel is the first cross-sea immersed tunnel in northern China. It started construction at the end of March 2017 and was announced to be fully operational at the end of September 2022. It officially opened in early May 2023, reducing the drive between the north and south sides of Dalian Bay to only five minutes. The project took seven years to build, with a total length of 12.1 kilometers for the main line, including 5.1 kilometers for the undersea tunnel section and 3,035 meters for the immersed tube section, which consists of 18 immersed tubes and a final joint. The tunnel is curved with a maximum depth of 30 meters under the sea. The design to standard of the tunnel is to be a city expressway. The media has said that the project has stunned even the neighboring country, Japan. Facing the water leakage, the local traffic police replied to the media that it did leak a little, but is still normal. The relevant departments are dealing with it. Later, the official continued to explain that the leak was caused by a disconnected fire pipe connection in the tunnel, and that the leaking section was not inside the tunnel. The tunnel was reopened to traffic on the same day. However, this statement has been questioned online by many people. Of course, this may not come as a surprise to our audience because our channel has repeatedly broadcast those appalling tofu dreg projects in China. How come these tofu dreg projects have become so well known around the world, but they can't be fixed in China? Let's take a look at another example. This is the city of Changsha, Hunan Province. An eight-story building collapsed on April 29, 2022, causing major casualties. A few days ago, a meeting of the State Council of China considered and approved the investigation report of this particularly serious building collapse. That is, the official announcement was issued more than one year later. According to the official investigation report released on May 21, 2023, 63 people were buried in this accident, including 50 university students, 11 businessmen and other people, and two homeowners and their families. A total of 54 people died in the accident, 44 of whom were university students. The report also mentions that the building collapsed in four seconds. At 12:21 a.m. on April 29, 2022, the eastern wall of the second-floor restaurant made a strange noise, and objects fell from the ceiling and the eastern exterior wall. At 12:24 a.m., the whole structure collapsed straight down, lasting four seconds. The building was built by a resident. The investigation determined that the main reason for the building collapse was that the owner of the property had illegally violated the law by adding additional roofs and floors to expand it for rental business, and the local government had to let it go. At the time of the collapse in 2022, the communist government claimed that 23 people were trapped in the building, five rescued, and 39 missing. Now that the official report is out for the public, it has sparked much debate online and was once on the top of the search list. Many people were shocked by the death of 44 university students. They questioned, "How come the university dormitory is a dangerous building? Many kids nowadays are the only child at home. They made their way into college to overcome much hardship. Now they are gone, just like that. How should parents live the rest of their lives?" Such a major accident, yet it took a year for officials to inform the investigation results and accountability. The four senior officials at the provincial or ministerial level and 58 public officials at various levels related to the accident were disciplined. The four senior officials were made accountable, with the most punitive measures being party warnings and political demerits. In other words, there are no consequences. Officials in the CCP protect each other and trade in power and money, making it impossible for innocent people who passed away to get justice. Corrupt officials who have violated the law don't get the punishment they deserve. This has led to the frequent occurrence of tofu drug projects in China. 
Recently, a high-rise apartment building in Shenzhen was shaken and the residents were scared and fled. At midnight on May 19th, the video shows a late-night emergency evacuation in an apartment building. Many people rushed downstairs to avoid danger. Police vehicles and fire engines stood guard nearby. A person who experienced it posted a video online, saying, May 19th, Shenzhen Longgong, 1 a.m., the whole building was vibrating and shaking. All the people in the building came down, but later no earthquake warning was issued. What the hell is going on? A self-identified Shenzhen netizen said he lived on the 35th floor and felt unsafe living in such a high-rise apartment. Another netizen wrote, This is my neighborhood. It was evacuated around midnight. The reason should be that the road in front of the entrance was excavating for a light rail. When reaching the depth of 27 meters, the surrounding ground cracked. The roads next to the building were cracked. Experts are now assessing the building. Bai Fuxing Building is one of the important buildings in the Longgong area of Shenzhen, with the height of more than 100 meters. On May 19th, local officials reported this incident, saying that there were strange noises and vibrations in the building. Experts initiated the monitoring of the risk and safety assessment of the building structure, and the cause is under investigation. Does this sound a little familiar? That's right, two years ago, also in Shenzhen, in May as well, Shenzhen Landmark Building, the 75-story SEG Plaza, was suddenly and strangely shaken in the absence of an earthquake. Let's review the scene back then. At around 12.30 p.m. on May 18, Shenzhen's SEG Building on Huachang North Road shook violently, sending people fleeing. Sources said that at least 10,000 people fled the building. Two businesses located on the 6th and 5th floors of the SEG building reported that the building had shaken between 1.30 and 2 p.m. The Shenzhen Housing and Construction Bureau pointed out that the building in question was closed yesterday and stated that the main structure of the building is safe. The cause of the shaking is still under investigation. Senior engineers said it's likely due to the resonance caused by wind and rain. The Shenzhen Emergency Management Bureau said it was checking the cause of the skyscraper shaking and swaying, but said no earthquake hit Shenzhen. Currently, only internal staff such as business employees are allowed to enter and leave the building in principle. Completed in 2000, the 75-story, 291-meter-tall SEG Tower is one of the most symbolic buildings in Shenzhen. Shenzhen and Hong Kong border each other. The building boasts a massive market for parts and electronics. The skyscraper was swaying again within the next two days. By the way, that was when our channel was first launched. Two years have passed and China's problematic tofu drag projects don't look like they have gotten any better. Look, this residential building collapsed in the middle of the night for unknown reasons. It was my house that collapsed. I don't even know what caused it. Now I don't know where I can live. My wife and son both lost their lives as a result. I have two other daughters and they are crying here. It was an ordinary home that collapsed suddenly with no official explanation and not even much local attention from the public. The lives that were taken will soon be forgotten, just like so many of China's lower class for whom the government and officials won't be held accountable. So do Chinese officials know about these tofu dreg projects? They do. At least they know more than the general public. China Daily reports that every year China consumes half of the world's steel and cement in construction, generating huge amounts of construction waste. A senior official from China's Ministry of Housing and Construction said at the 6th International Conference on Green Building and Building Energy Efficiency in late March 2023, China has the largest amount of new construction in the world each year, with 2 billion square meters of new construction each year. It's equivalent to consuming 40% of the world's cement and steel, but it only lasts 25 to 30 years.
You heard right. New buildings in China only have a lifespan of 20 to 30 years, not at least 70 years, as people think. The title to the property in their hands, that is, the ownership of the home, is 70 years. This official's words were verified by hard facts on April 11, 2023. On April 11th, a building collapsed in Sichuan Province, southwest China. Video footage shows a huge cloud of dust rising from the scene and crowds of people who witnessed the collapse. Debris piled up two stories high and a side of the building that didn't collapse was partially damaged. According to Chinese media reports, the collapsed structure was a residential building of a local food company. It had 10 floors above ground and two floors below, covering 2,100 square meters. Local authorities explained that in October 2022, while conducting an inspection of the building, it was found that the building had hidden dangers. It was then reported. The county housing authority identified it as a dangerous building of Class C. After the appraisal, all 21 households and 66 people living in the building were moved out and a perimeter was set up. This is because private residential property rights in China are only 70 years. This building didn't make it to 70 years, unfortunately. It was only about 30 years old. Look, here is an excavator at work. The work site is not a building under construction, but a residential building already occupied. It turns out that someone rented the third floor of this residential building, intended to open a gym in this completed building. On this floor, four homes sharing the same elevator were to be opened up and become a large open space. In the process, the bearing wall was removed. When they saw the wall cracking on the fourth and sixth floors, the residents started to panic. They rushed to the site and started to scold the construction unit. At 1 a.m. on April 28th, more than 240 homeowners in the building were evacuated in an emergency. The owners were temporarily placed in nearby hotels. Chinese media said that local housing and construction authorities and police had stepped in to investigate. A day later, cracks in the building already extended over 21 floors. Does this sound bizarre? From the tenant who runs the gym to the construction crew to the property management of the building, all of them are completely ignorant about the safety of the building. According to public information, the three-story area where the accident occurred has long been changed from residential to commercial use with the last tenant being a hotel. The previous tenant ran a hotel there. Four residential units were converted into the space needed by the hotel. When the owner of the hotel was done, the space was transferred to the gym owner. So, who issued the permit for the change of the building use to the owner of the hotel and the owner of the gym? If the government construction department gave the permit, which law or regulation allows the construction department to issue such a permit? Currently, the Chinese media is intentionally directing public attention to the gym owner and the construction company with the property company at most bearing some of the responsibility, while the government appears innocent as if they knew nothing. In truth, the government is at least significantly responsible when the residential space was changed to be used as a hotel in the earlier times. In an era when the government can determine if individuals are disgruntled bad actors based on face recognition, the probability of a hotel operating in a neighborhood for several years without being detected is zero. Confucius, who was revered as a sage in China, said, Punishing without teaching is called tyranny, meaning not educating beforehand and punishing severely when one makes a mistake is called tyranny. Everyone in this incident is a victim, including the gym owner and the construction company, because they suffered a loss in a disorderly arena with no law, no supervision, and no foresight. <laughs>